Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tracy and for those of you who don't know me, I have a passion for upcycling clothing. I can't wait to show you guys how to drape a silk mini dress. This draping technique is on bias with silk charmeuse, so it's more on the intermediate advanced side of draping. So if this is your first time draping, definitely try this, but I recommend just familiarizing yourself with draping and just like the basics. For this tutorial, you're gonna need a dress form and I purchased my form off the Etsy seller Royal Dress Forms and they have a wide range of sizes. I got the Monica in light beige. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to drape it and then from the drape, transfer it onto paper. I have like a scrap here, but you need a uh, two yards of silk charmeuse to drape in. Bias takes up a lot of fabric, which is unfortunate because it's such a beautiful way to cut fabric. And you need some rigid lace if you want to applique at the necklines. You need some pins to drape with and some style tape so you can map out your silhouette on your dress form scissors and thread and a needle because you have to baste your bias lines. A water soluble marker for marking your fabric. Patterning your drape, you're going to need paper and I prefer plain paper. Um, I just got the dotted because it's what they had, but I use the wrong side of it. So just paper or wrapping paper, honestly, anything you can make a pattern out of. You're gonna need a straight ruler and a curved one. This one's like very clear, so it's kind of hard to see. I, it's like called a ship curve. Um, I'll see if I can link it below, but this is my favorite curve for intimate apparel. You're going to need pencil and a tracing wheel. So the wheel with like the spikes on it. You don't need this, but um, I really like it just because it's a bendable ruler and it's so cool. It comes in handy when you're measuring curves. So it's, it's really nice ruler. I'll link this below. I'm going to be showing you guys how to drape this dress, but I'm not actually making it yet because draping it takes a long time and doing the pattern. So um, I'm just showing you guys my process and then for the following week, I'm actually going to make the dress. I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So grab your style tape and just place it about an inch away from the princess seam and just bring it down below the bust at the center front and place a pin. I wanted a deep neckline, that's why I'm below the bust. I grab some more style tape and just connect it at the strap point and just bring it down around the side seam and to the back. I drop about an inch and a half at the back. And you just want to pin your style tape in place. Excuse my mouth moving in this video. I was trying to talk while filming, but my audio was pretty terrible. With any excess style tape, just pin it out of the way. And I start by taking another style tape. So I pin it at the center front and just kind of curve it right under the bust and I drop about a half inch at the princess and then just straighten out when I head to the side seam and pin it in place so this is going to be the under bust seam and I recommend using a bra pad and without the bra pad my form's bust is about 32 and my bust is more like 33 and a half 34 so this is why I use a bra pad to get my accurate projection you can start draping the cup, so I'm just taking the silk charmeuse fabric and just cutting about a 18 by 7 inch rectangle so I can drape for the cup. With silk charmeuse, you can just do the slash and tear method. This is just so satisfying. After you tear your fabric, you can just go ahead and take it to the iron because silk charmeuse loves to wrinkle. So after you've ironed your fabric, you can just take the straight edge side. So the side we tore on, that is your straight grain. So on that straight edge of the fabric, you line that up to the neckline of the cup. So you can see I'm just placing like the center of that rectangle right against that neckline and you wanna just pin that in place. I pin at the strap point and then I just take the fabric and just like hold it taut at the neckline all the way to the center front and place another pin and then I just pin the rest of that neckline in place. And at the underbust, I start smoothing so you can see I can like smooth the fabric and I just start placing a pin like about an inch away from the center front. And next, I just smooth the side. So at the armhole, I'm just taking that excess fabric and just pinning it up and smoothing that armhole line. So you can see I just like pin that armhole. That makes sense. So there's like that excess fabric and I'm just smoothing it as much as possible armhole seems to like pucker so I just go ahead and like leave about an inch seam allowance and just cut and you can see that there's like a little bit of bubbles so I just take my scissors and just start slashing not cutting at that armhole but just like pretty close I just repin at that armhole and just kind of like 
pushed the fabric up. I'm just trying to get rid of that bubble. So now you can see it's very smooth. And next you wanna just mark your apex on your fabric. So I just take my washable marker and just mark the intersection of the princess and the bust line. And you can see with all that extra fabric at the bottom, at the under bust, we're going to be making a dart with it. Before we start doing the dart, we want to just start at the side seam and like smooth that under bust. So I'm just placing pins until I get to the princess and then it's going to start bubbling. So you want to just trim like that excess fabric at the bottom. So I'm just grabbing my scissors and like leaving about a one inch seam allowance. So I'm just kind of slashing and cutting that excess away. Now we can start making the dart. So at the princess seam, you want to go in about a half inch and just place a pin and that's where the dart pickup is going to start and i have so much fabric at the bottom that is unnecessary so i'm just trimming a bit of it away i pinch that excess fabric and then i just fold it towards the center front and just place a pin at the under bust and then i just start folding from the top of the dart and just folding that excess in and just pinning it in place there's a bubble right under the bust as you can see so I just take my scissor and slash to relieve that tension and trim away the excess. And this is how you drape a cup in silkshire mousse with a dart. So I'm just taking my water soluble marker and just following the armhole of that style tape as well as the style tape at the under bust. And for the dart, I just take my marker and just mark that fold line, so just that center line of the dart towards the apex, and I mark either side of the dart as well. Cup drape is all marked, we can just remove it from the dress form and it'll be ready to flat pattern, but just make sure to leave the dart pinned. For the front and back pieces we have to drape, we have to prep the squares first so you want to cut out a 45 by 45 inch square and i'm doing this in a mini version because it's kind of hard for me to film such a large piece so you're going to take your square and just fold it diagonally so you can get the bias on that fold and you want to make sure that fold is completely smooth and rolls really nicely and isn't like twisting and you want to just repeat this to two squares, not just one. So you're going to need one for the front and one for the back. So once you get that nice fold on that bias line, you want to just pin that in place so nothing shifts. I'm taking the water soluble marker and just marking little dots like about a half inch away on that fold. So I know where to put my needle and thread through. And I just do this all the way across that bias. I remove all of the pins and then I grab my needle and thread and just start basting right on that bias line. So you can see those dots that are marked and you want to use a contrast thread so you can actually see the bias line when you're draping. And you just do that to both squares so now the front and the back squares will be ready to drape in and you can see this is like the giant version i was working on my floor because it's just so much fabric to work with and now it's all basted take one square to start draping the front piece and i go about down like 12 inches on that bias line and then i place a pin at the bust line and then i just pin the neckline up and out of the way so i just start pinning all the way down the center front of my dress form and i'm using that bias thread as my guide so i'm just pinning that right down at the center front so that's gonna be my center I just pin the right side up and out of the way because we are only draping on the left side of the form because we only need to drape on one side left side i just take a pin and just like kind of pin it um in place so i can just um, cut some excess at above the under bust if that makes sense so I'm just kind of trimming this excess fabric off and just kind of going as straight as possible to the other side so there's not so much tension after I trimmed that there's like a lot of tension at the center front neckline so I'm just taking my scissor and slashing the other side to relieve some of the tension on the side we're draping on. I start slashing right above the underbust seam so I can relieve the tension so I can drape this front panel as smooth as possible at the underbust seam. 
just slashing more and just cutting off some excess so there's like less fabric and I'm just smoothing out towards the underbust seam and you can see that there's still like pucker and tension so I'm just taking my scissor and just slashing a lot closer to that underbust seam and I also trim towards the center front on that underbust seam because it's also puckering a bit And when I get to the rest of the underbust seam at the side, I'm just placing more pins and just smoothing it out and just slashing and spreading more. So the goal with bias is to just make it as smooth as possible. And I'm just kind of deciding how I want my fabric to lay. I liked the look of having like the two flares, but you're also welcome to just like smooth your fabric out so it's like a tighter slip around the waist. And I decided on the flare, so at the side seam, I'm kind of just smoothing the fabric out as best as possible and just pinning the side seam all the way down and then I'm just slashing so I can relieve that tension at the side. And you can see it's starting to lay flat when I start slashing. And once I get rid of some excess, I just go back into the waist and trim a little bit more at the side and just a slash closer to the side seam so I can get that waist point very defined. I add more pins at the side seam just to make sure everything's secure. And I'm very happy with the drape of the front panel, so now I'm just going to take my water soluble marker and just mark the underbust as well as the side seam. And I also dot the waistline at the side seam as well as the center front. When it comes to the hemline, you can just decide your own length so it can be longer or shorter. I wanted mine pretty short so I'm kind of just eyeballing my hem so I'm just cutting and it doesn't have to be perfect because it's a drape and we can just perfect the length on paper. So now for the back piece, we're just going to take the other square and we're lining up that bias line to the center back so I went down about like 18 inches on that bias line and that's where I pinned the back and I had enough to drape towards the side seam because if I would have dropped it lower I would not have enough fabric to get all the way to the side. I pinned the top and like the side of that fabric out of the way so I can focus on the side I'm draping so once I figured out where like the side seam is going to start I'm just taking my scissor and just cutting all of that fabric at the top off to relieve that tension. I start slashing at the center back right on that bias so I can relieve the tension and then I'm just trimming away at the back neckline. And I'm just doing a lot more slashing and just like smoothing so I can follow the back neckline. I'm pretty much just doing the same thing as I did to the front piece but just following the style lines for the back. And when I reach the side seam, I get a lot of like tension, so I'm just slashing. Just anytime when you get like tension or bubbles, just slash. And it usually smooths everything out, so I'm just smoothing and pinning along that neckline. And I smooth all the way to the side seam. And I'm just pinning the side seam in place and then doing the same thing I did to the front. So just slashing and just trimming off excess to relieve all that tension. And now that I'm happy with the back drape, I just take my water soluble marker and just mark the back neckline as well as the side seam. And for the hem, I'm just kind of eyeballing it again, so we'll fix it on paper, but I just wanted to see it visually. Finally, we have finished draping all of our pieces and we can transfer them onto paper. So starting with a cup, just take a square piece of paper that's just big enough to just pattern out the cup and I'm just remarking that center fold on the dart just to make sure it's marked and I'm not going to lose it when I remove the pins. After removing all the pins, I recommend ironing your piece so you get all the wrinkles out and take your ruler and just drop a straight line on your piece of paper and take your cup pattern and line up that neckline with that line we just dropped down and I don't have pattern weights so I'm just using my magnet and thread to like hold down 
this piece so I can just use my tracing wheel and trace all of my marks. After tracing all of my markings with the wheel, they have been transferred to the paper so I just remove the drape and just go in with my pencil and just mark those lines. I mark the apex and then just the center of that dart and I use my curved ruler just to perfect all of my lines. And the way I found the dart pickup, I fold right on the apex of the dart like that and then you just take the fold line and fold on that and just like bring it over to where the dart closes if that makes sense and then you just use your tracing wheel to go over that bottom under bust seam if that makes sense and then that's how you get the shape for what it looks like inside the dart. I only added seam allowance at the under bust seam because at the front neckline and the armhole there's going to be lace so I just write on my pattern on the sides that are going to have lace applique. So now we can start patterning the front and the back of the dress and I'm just dropping a straight line down on my piece of paper. I forgot the size of this piece of paper, just make sure that drape will fit on there. So just drop the straight line down and grab your drape and you're gonna line up that bias line that we hand basted with the line that you just put on your paper. So just place that right on top and I like to pin it in place so I make sure the bias line doesn't move and it matches that line we dropped down. I smooth out the drape and just get it as flat as possible and I take my tracing wheel and trace all of my markings. And once those are transferred, I just use my rulers to true in all of those lines as perfect as possible. I feel like this video is going to be so long, <laughs> um, so I'm adding a half inch seam allowance at the underbust seam as well as the side seam. And when I get to the hem, I made my length about like 15 inches long from the waist. So uh, like I said, we marked that waist on the drape, so from that waist measurement, I'm marking like 15 inches all the way around, so it's kind of like a circle skirt if that makes sense. So from the waist, you're just kind of following your ruler all the way around like 15 inches evenly. I hope that makes sense. Add a half inch seam allowance to the hem, it's always better to be longer so you're safe. And a trick I like to use is to just measure the cup at the underbust to make sure that measurement is exactly the same as the front piece of the dress so that underbust is should be the same exact measurement but you can be within like a quarter inch tolerance i'm just repeating all of these steps to the back panel and when i get to the pattern before i add the seam allowance and do the hem i'm just taking the front pattern and just walking that side seam so starting it from the top of the side seam and just walking the pattern if you can see what i'm doing and just matching up the side seam and just marking where the front pattern ends at the side onto the back so they're exactly the same measurement when they are cut out. The hemline gets marked the same exact way as the front, so from the waistline you're just measuring 15 inches or your desired length and then just do that all the way around until you get to the center back. And I'm adding a half inch seam allowance at the side seam and the hem. I accidentally added it at the back neckline and then realized that's where the lace goes. So I start just cutting out my pattern piece on that line and getting rid of that seam allowance and then just cutting around the seam allowance for the rest of the piece. I like to double check my pattern. So once I cut out the front and the back, I just kind of join them at the side seam and just kind of look at it and see I have a perfect round shape that there's no like pointed corners or anything and I'm just taking my drape and just cutting it out into the full front and back pieces so I can see what it's going to look like when I like pin it on the form and please don't cut bias on the fold I'm only doing this because it's a drape and I just want to see what it's going to look like but bias should be cut should be cut flat open so your pattern piece will be cut on the fold so you'll get a mirrored image on the other side and have a big piece to cut out on the bias when it's completely flat so never cut bias on the fold i'm very happy with the final drape and now we can start adding the lace applique i'm just following the back neckline and using the low point of the scallop as my straight edge 
So I'm just starting at the center back and then just pinning it in place and just bringing it around to the side as much as I can until it starts like having a lot of tension. Then I just grab my scissor, start cutting out the lace applique as I desire and it'll relieve some of the tension. And at the side seam, I'm just cutting off like a one inch seam allowance just so I have enough to do a hidden join when I do the next piece on top. So you can refer back to my silk lace cami tutorial if you don't know what a hidden join is, but um, I explain what I do there. So I'm just draping this so I know where my hidden join is going to be. And I'm just marking the side seam on the lace as well as the center back. I'm happy with how the lace is looking and that's how it looks. I'm happy with the drape. I'll cut it out nicely later after I finish this drape. So this is just like a rough idea of the lace and I'm just repeating this with the rest of the armhole. So you can see I'm just finding where I'm going to join that scallop at the top neckline. So I'm just placing my lace where I like it and then just following the rest of that armhole. I'm just repeating the same exact step, so I just take my scissors and just start cutting out the way I want the applique to be done. And at the side, I'm like cutting out that flower so I can applique that on top for the hidden join. And just deciding what I want this to look like around the cup. And don't forget to mark that side seam on the top of the lace so you know where the hidden join is and also mark the scallop. So now just leave like a good amount of excess fabric over the strap point and just take more lace and start draping the front neckline until you're happy with it. And I'm just cutting out the applique a little bit shorter for the front because I don't want to cover the dart because I love seeing the dart. So I'm just kind of going around the bottom part of that scallop to get that curved shape and I'm leaving a flower at the center front so I can have a nice flower applique in the center. And I just trimmed the rest of the applique, leaving like that little flower there so I can like do a hidden join with the other piece underneath. I take a step back and look at the applique. I wasn't happy with like this part near the cup, so I decided to just cut it away so I had more of the fabric for the cup showing was already 10 times better so I'm just taking my marker and marking the center front as well as the hidden join portion at the strap point and this is the final drape I'm so happy with it I'm completely in love with this silk mini dress and I can't wait to actually make it <laughs>